सो नाउ लेट अस टॉक अबाउट द एपिडेमियोलॉजी ऑफ मलेरिया एपिडेमियोलॉजी ऑफ मलेरिया ओके द प्लाज्मोडियम फेल्सिपैरम प्लाज्मोडियम फेल्सिपैरम इज प्राइमरी फाउंड इन अफ्रीका प्राफ्रीका न्यू गिनिया न्यू गिनिया एंड हिस्पेनियोला ओके प्लाज्मोडियम फाइव एक्स प्लाज्मोडियम फाइव एक्स मोस्टली अकॉर्स इन सेंट्रल एंड साउथ अमेरिका सेंट्रल एंड साउथ अमेरिका बोथ दीज स्पीसीज प्लाज्मोडियम फेल्सिपैरम एंड प्लाज्मोडियम फाइव एक्स आर फाउंड इक्वली बोथ स्पीसीज आर फाउंड इक्वली इन एशिया इन एशिया ओके प्लाज्मोडियम मलेरी प्लाज्मोडियम मलेरी इज फाउंड इन सॉफ सारन Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Plasmodium ovale in Africa, but less than one percent, and Plasmodium nolisi, Plasmodium nolisi is found in island of island of Borneo and Southeast Asia to a lesser extent, to a lesser extent. The endemicity has been defined uh, in terms of rates of microscopically detected parasitemia or palpable spleen in children two to nine years of age. Okay, how we have uh, defined the endemicity according to the microscopy microscopy detected parasitemia parasitemia or or palpable spleen in children palpable spleen in children 2 to 9 years of age okay according to this we have defined the endemicity into the uh, hypoendemic hypoendemic areas mesoendemic areas hyperendemic areas and holoendemic areas hyperendemic areas and Holo endemic areas, okay. Hypo endemic areas means uh, the endemicity of less than ten percent. Mesu endemic means eleven to fifty percent. Hypo endemic means fifty one to seventy five percent. Whereas holo endemic means greater than seventy five percent, okay. So remember the fact that in uh, the hypo endemic areas, in the hypo endemic areas, and in the holo endemic areas, holo me endemic areas. Repeated infection occurs. Okay, repeated infection occurs because the malaria is highly endemic. So, repeated infection occurs in this area. So, uh, in childhood, in childhood, due to the repeated infection, due to repeated infection, the child suffers from the symptomatic disease. Symptomatic disease. Okay, but if the child survives uh, from this symptomatic disease, the child progressively becomes asymptomatic. Progressively becomes, progressively becomes asymptomatic. When the child grows into the older, grows older, that is, the older children and adults in these areas, hyperendemic areas and the holo endemic areas. uh they are mostly asymptomatic but in the childhood there is symptomatic disease but uh as uh the age increases they progressively becomes asymptomatic if they survive from the uh, childhood symptomatic disease okay and these all children and adults although they are asymptomatic but uh they have parasitemia parasitemia in uh, blood and this level of parasitemia is sufficient for the transmission of for the transmission so this older children and adults are the reservoir of infection reservoir of infections or transmission in these areas because uh, they do not have symptomatic disease but they can transmit the malaria they can transmit the malaria okay in uh In these areas, 
there is stable transmission of malaria that is the malaria is present throughout the year that is constant frequent year round transmission year round transmission whereas unstable transmission means low erotic uh, low erratic or focal transmission okay so uh, this stable transmission that is the transmission of malaria throughout the year occurs in mostly in the hyper endemic areas and the hollow endemic areas whereas the unstable transmission that is uh, only uh, during certain seasons occurs in the uh, hypo endemic areas and the major endemic areas and we have already discussed that in the hyper endemic and hollow endemic areas if the child survives from the symptomatic disease in the early years of the life then the child becomes uh, progressively asymptomatic uh, so the adults adults and the children uh, adults and the older children are uh, mostly asymptomatic in these uh, reasons and symptomatic are the children whereas uh, in the areas where there is unstable transmission of malaria that is focal transmission of malaria all the age groups all the ages age groups can be symptomatic okay and whether it is in the uh, hyper endemic areas hollow endemic areas hyper endemic area or major endemic areas the transmission of mosquito uh, and the transmission of malaria uh, is increased uh, primarily in the rainy season primarily in the rainy season uh, because uh, at the in rainy season there is uh, increased mosquito bleeding and uh, which also leads to the increase transmission of malaria so what are the principal determinants of the epidemiology what are the principal determinants of the epidemiology uh, principal determinants of epidemiology are principal determinants of epidemiology are first is the density of the vector density of the vector that means if uh, there is more mosquito there is more malaria more malaria second is human biting habit human biting habit okay if the mosquito preferentially love to bite the humans then it is an efficient vector then there is more malaria and third is the longevity longevity of anophelin mosquito why longevity is a uh, important determinant of epidemiology because uh, for sporogony for sporogony uh, which is a process of formation of sporozoid uh, which occurs in the mosquito it takes about 8 to 30 days to occur so the mosquito mosquito must survive mosquito must survive for greater than 7 days for greater than 7 days to transmit malaria to transmit malaria ok second is that the sporogony sporogony is not completed in the cooler environment sporogony is not completed at cooler temperatures cooler temperatures uh, so so no malaria so no malaria is found in the high altitudes because of the low temperature uh, because sporogony cannot occur and we should remember the fact that the most efficient vector most efficient vector is anopheles anopheles gambis species anopheles gambi species why it is an efficient vector anopheles gambi species because it has more density okay because it preferentially bite the human and it has long it has more long life cycle okay thank you